World War, aimed to bring those remaining high-ranking Nazis to justice for the crimes they committed during the conflict. On trial were defendants such as Rudolf Hess and Hermann Goering, who were intimate members of Adolf Hitler's inner circle. They had a key understanding and role within the Third Reich. There were others who some who witnessed the trials may not have even heard of. One of the most evil and virulent Nazis placed on trial at Nuremberg was Julius Streicher, a man who even until his dying moment would confess his love for Hitler and the Nazi cause. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Julius Streicher, the evil Nazi newspaper mogul. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Julius Streicher was born on the 12th of February 1885 in Bavaria and was part of a large family, being one of nine children. His father was a teacher, and later Julius also began a career in education like his father. He married in 1913 in Nuremberg, and had two sons. In 1914, as Germany was on the edge of the First World War, Stryker joined the army, and during the conflict he was noted for his bravery and outstanding skill on the battlefield, winning the Iron Cross 1st and 2nd class. There were accounts of his poor behaviour in the army, but after World War I he returned home to Nuremberg and returned to teaching. At some point a switch clicked in Stryker's mind that would change the lives of so many. He began to develop incredibly anti-Semitic values and these could have emerged as he may have blamed the Jews for the loss of the First World War. A wave of anti-Semitism was sweeping post-war Germany and Stryker helped to propagate this by joining different anti-Semitic groups. They believed that the Jews were the traitors who were trying to impose communism onto the German state, and Stryker continued to join different racist groups. He even went as far as setting up his own regional section of a political party, the DSP, which was close to the Nazi party in Nuremberg in 1919. The DSP did spread their influence, and Stryker wanted the nationalistic group to become even more anti-Semitic, and it was clear that he had a clear hatred for the Jews and for foreigners. In 1921, Julius Stryker joined the Nazi party, and with him brought a number of members of the DSP, doubling the supporter numbers of the Nazi party. He travelled to Munich to hear the man he would go on to idolise, Adolf Hitler, speak, and at that moment he first saw Hitler, he said, It was on a winter's day in 1922. I sat unknown in a large hall of the Bergerbrau house. Suspense was in the air. Everyone seemed tense with excitement and anticipation. Then suddenly a shout, Hitler is coming. Thousands of men and women jumped to their feet, as if propelled by a mysterious power. They shouted, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, and then he stood on the podium. Then I knew that in this, Adolf Hitler was someone extraordinary. Here was one who could wrestle out the German spirit in the German heart, the power to break the chains of slavery. This man was a messenger sent from heaven at a time where the gates of hell were opening to pull everything down. Stryker's bizarre comments after seeing Hitler speak for the first time stresses his devotion to the man and the Nazi cause, and he describes Hitler as a godly figure, or an entity sent to rescue Germany. It's almost like he underwent a religious conversion, but in May 1923 Stryker would go further. He founded Der Stürmer, the Stormer or Attacker, which was a newspaper which would distribute and spread pure anti-Semitic propaganda. From the first issue the rhetoric was incredibly anti-Jewish and brutal, and Stryker, even in the early days, stated his hatred for the Jews. The Stürmer quickly became a place where eye-catching and sensationalist headlines attacked the Jews and other minorities. Inside the issues were innuendo, racist cartoons, and made-up tales of murder, and other disgusting rhetoric made to do nothing except stir up hatred against the Jews. Stryker was present during the failed Beer Hall Putsch, which shows us even from the start he was at one with Hitler, and incredibly devoted. For this, he was suspended from his job as a teacher, and Hitler valued Stryker's trust and loyalty, and over the years he would repay him. When Stryker later encountered problems with the hierarchy of the Nazi party and other senior members, Hitler would always back him. In 1925, when the Nazi party was legalised and shuffled, Stryker became the Gauleiter of Nordbayern, and he established himself within Nuremberg. He later became the Gauleiter of Franconia in 1929, presiding over a larger area. The Stürmer itself began to become a rather popular publication across Germany, and Stryker used it for smear campaigns against other political enemies too, 
and allegedly even got into trouble for allegations against Hermann Goering. 